before i even start with the review i'm confused about something and i was hoping you guys can clear it for me in this movie janet freaks out when she realizes that they were experimented with quantum realm because she knows what's in there but in the end credit scene of previous ant-man and wasp movie she is actually helping hank with his experiments on quantum realm and she was okay with sending scott in there so is there a reason behind it or it's just a continuity error wait wait a minute you're sending a signal down to the quantum realm turn it off now make sure you stay out of the tardigrade fields they're cute but they'll eat you and don't get stuck into the time contact another thing i'm confused about is is when scott was stuck in there for 5 years was he stuck in quantum realm or microverse or somewhere else Because if he was stuck there, wouldn't he be aware about the civilization in there, which he wasn't in this movie? If you have answers to these questions, let me know in the comments. I don't need sleep. I need answers. Now let's start with the review. This is a spoiler-free review till this time mark. After that, I will start giving spoilers. But don't worry, I will warn before I do that. So, I finally watched Ant-Man and Wasp: Quantumania, and it was just all right. It's kind of sad how much this word "all right" has been attached to most of the recent MCU movies and TV shows as well. I will be honest today, I always felt kind of a bias towards most MCU projects because it has given me so many memorable moments, theater experiences, and characters that I will remember forever. Whenever I will review their mediocre projects, I will appreciate the little things cause the whole project wasn't something I can sing praises of be it Black Panther Werewolf by Night Guardian of the Galaxy Holiday Special or even She-Hulk I gave up on that show when I realized they aren't even trying to make this show good and even when I have criticized them I have gone easy but I won't be doing that for this movie cause I'm tired of getting hyped for a MCU movie only to get disappointed honestly I still hope that they will make a comeback with quality movies but I can't just sit and wait for that and sing praises of their mediocre movies. It's always the same story now. Like listen to this. The actors did a great job, but the writing was weak, the execution was even worse, and the jokes were unnecessary and the CGI wasn't the best. Now listen to it again and think for yourself how many of their recent projects can be accurately reviewed with these few sentences. It's the same case with Ant-Man and Wasp: Quantumania. Let me first share what I like cuz there's not much. Like I said, even in these okayish movies, the acting is always good. Paul Rudd is energetic as always. And while I wish Evangeline Lilly's wasp was given more to do, but she did her best. Michael Douglas and Michelle Pfeiffer were great and Catherine Newton was decent in her debut in MCU, but I think the star of the movie was Jonathan Majors. One thing that has been constant in recent MCU movies <laughs> other than their mediocre nature is fantastic villains. Be it Wanda in Doctor Strange, Gore in Love and Thunder, Namor in Wakanda Forever or Kang in this movie. They have all been the biggest highlight of their movies and huge reason behind it is obviously the outstanding performances. Jonathan Majors' performance was chilling. At first I thought he was acting a bit weird. But as I continued watching I realized how good it was and I think he was acting like that himself to bring variation to this version of Kang. He will be playing multiple version of Kang so I'm sure he will add variation to all the Kangs with noticeable parts. Jonathan Major will add major variation to Kang. <laughs> yeah no I shouldn't judge them for adding bad jokes when I'm doing it myself. <laughs> But I will still do that <laughs> cuz the jokes were so bad I didn't laugh a single time honestly not even smiled a little never thought I will say that for a MCU movie but it's true and it's not cuz they didn't add in many jokes they did but none was funny even a little and oh yeah Bill Murray was there too that's the best way to describe his cameo <laughs> it was really pointless and all his cameo resulted in was awkward lame jokes between Hank Janet and Hope Though I will admit that this movie was better than Love and Thunder and maybe even Multiverse of Madness but that's cause the bar is set that low. Another thing that I liked about this was that they didn't waste much time before getting started with the quantum stuff. Within 15 minutes they were in the quantum realm but that's another thing that they wasted the whole movie after that. Also the build up to Kang was pretty good. They set him up in a great way but once you have watched the whole movie 
you realize there was no point of building him up because they just wasted him and made him look so weak. I won't be able to discuss it too much without spoiling so I will discuss it in the spoiler portion of the video. But you may have noticed a pattern. Every good thing that this movie did was followed by something that ruined it. And this was all I liked about this movie. Now let's talk about what I didn't like. First act of the movie was so boring and the second act was engaging at parts and it was going all right but then the third act started and ruined it for me. It was just so generic and lame. I was frustrated by the end like it was all over the place and just about anything was happening. All the build up of Kang the Conqueror was thrown out of the window. He basically did nothing. Throughout the movie it seemed like he was holding back so when I was watching the ending I was expecting him to fully unleash his fury and show why he is going to be the next big bad of MCU like Thanos but even bigger. And this Kang is supposed to be the most dangerous one but they wasted his character's potential with the ending and made him look as weak as they could have. Wanda or Gore were way bigger threat in their movies than Kang in this movie. The ending really really wasted the whole point of this movie. It's like Army of the Dead. Spoilers for Army of the Dead. But how in the end of that movie everyone dies, they basically fail their missions, Hiroki Shinada's character didn't get what he sent them for and the Lady Batista's daughter was trying to save dies as well, making the whole movie basically pointless. It's the same case with Ant-Man and Wasp Quantumania but worse cause this movie was supposed to start the new phase of MCU but really it's the worst way to start it. They really made their new big threat look weak, didn't progress the story and between the first and last scene of the movie, basically nothing changed story wise. If you have watched Loki, you can skip this movie and you will still understand Kang's story in future. And if you haven't watched Loki, I will suggest watching that season rather than this movie. It is funnier, more creative and better story wise. Also another useless character in this movie was Modok. He was just alright, he didn't do much and the movie could have worked without him. I mean it would have saved us from this sore thumb. He looked so weird. Hey, that's pretty good. Oh my God! Instead of Modok, they could have added Michael Pena's character Luis, and he would have made this movie much more entertaining. I don't get why they didn't add in him. Were they afraid of adding some fun in the movie? But yeah, this is all I can say about this movie without spoiling. Spoiler free review ends here. Now I will discuss this movie with spoilers, so you can either leave or get it spoiled for yourself. Or if you have already watched the movie then do stay. Ok so where to begin. Let's continue with Kang. As I was saying he was wasted. Throughout the movie they were building him up. Janet was acting all scared of him. Civilizations are scared of him. He was controlling Scott with just a slight movement of his hand. Like I said this is supposed to be a really dangerous version of Kang. So dangerous that other Kangs trapped him in the quantum realm. He has destroyed multiverse. In a scene he even said that he has defeated Avengers and so many powerful beings. But then he lost to Wasp, Ant-Man, his inexperienced daughter and to old person. Like seriously. I was sure this movie will end with Kang beating the shit out of them and escaping to Earth, setting up the multiverse saga fully. Cause so far the so called multiverse saga has barely been explored. But of course they didn't even explore it in this movie. I don't understand how they expect us to take future version of Kang serious when this dangerous unhinged version of Kang who is literally called the Conqueror lost to beaten up Ant-Man and Wasp. Did he lost against the power of family? <laughs> Am I watching a Fast and Furious movie? I mean they made him look so weak, Dom and his family can easily kick his ass as well. And Kang wasn't overpowered once but twice. First those big ants took him like he's just a ragdoll. Did he forgot how to use force or whatever he was doing with his hands when torturing Scott and Cassie or did his laser beam powers and shield that he was using to destroy the civilization became weak all of a sudden. Whatever the reason was but showing Kang being dragged by ants wasn't a great decision for the new big baddie. And then he was outsmarted and outpowered by Ant-Man and Wasp. And if he can't stand these two, then how are other versions of Kang going to stand Wanda, Doctor Strange, Thor, Captain Marvel, Hulk, Spider-Man and Morbius to name few. And not just the Kang stuck but the whole ending of the movie was really bad. And it was all over the place. Like somehow Cassie knows how to take over Kang's hologram presentation and then she gave the most generic good character speech to convince the civilization to fight back and take what's theirs. 
and i guess they never thought about this genius idea themselves they were like my goodness, my goodness what, what an idea, idea. i didn't even really think of that, that. I think writers watch all these new movies and thought these are such great ideas why think of new ones when these great ones already exist it's free real estate and while the writing was weak but i think the concept story was actually pretty good unlike multiverse of madness in which too much was happening or love and thunder in which not much was happening this one was a good balance but as usual the execution and the decisions made it a weak one The ending was already bad with Kang losing, but it could have been a little better if they thought that Scott and Hope are stuck in the run now, and they can't use the machine to get back. Cause if they did, then it might bring back Kang. So now they are down there and they are learning about Quantum Realm. And as they are stuck down, they won't be able to inform others about the arrival of other Kangs. Mm. Everyone will be unprepared for the arrival of Kangs, which they still are. I will get to that in a second. But no, they could have forced the happy ending on us. and kaise just do random stuff to get the portal opened again and they return back to home first of all how did she know how to do that in the start they showed that she was only experimenting with the quantum satellite thing they didn't develop that it can open portals between quantum realm and earth or that that they had any machine that can open portals and secondly even after they make their returns to earth they literally showed that score didn't took pang's warning seriously and that made this movie completely and utterly pointless They had a chance to progress the multiverse story further, and they didn't do it. Basically, multiverse saga stands right where it was standing a week or two ago when this movie hadn't come out. At least Doctor Strange: Multiverse of Madness progressed his and Wanda's characters, introduced new characters, and explored at least one multiverse. Thor: Love and Thunder progressed Thor's individual story and set up for the next Thor movie. This movie does nothing. It didn't even progress the individual stories. What did they progress? That Kasi has a super suit. It's not like they showed her journey to getting it. She already had that. They could have done the same thing in a minute or two in the next Avengers movie. Cassie randomly becoming Ant Girl or whatever her superhero name will be, and saying she had this shoot with her. No need to make this movie just for that. And they could have shown Scott is contacting Doctor Strange, Hulk, or Rhodey to inform them that Kang may be coming, and the Avengers need to get back together. But of course, that didn't happen because Scott just forgot whatever Kang said. Talking about Cassie's super suit, when she first wears the suit and shrinks down, this CGI was so bad, <laughs> and the way she was running, it was so weird. It kind of reminded me of Ezra Miller's Flash running. CGI overall was alright, except for few scenes here and there, like the green screen behind Bill Murray was pretty obvious, and Modok's face adjustment seemed so off and weird. And Modok's character arc was so bad and forced. We have only seen him as villain, be it the first Ant Man or this movie. He was the villain the whole time. He helped Kang to suppress the civilizations in the realm. He stood behind Kang, watching him torture Scott and Cassie. But after having like ten seconds conversation with her, he's changed now. <laughs> now he's attacking Kang. Now he's dying. Now he wants to be an Avenger for some reason and calling Scott his brother. This might be the most forced redemption arc I have seen in recent times. Anything was happening in the ending. It didn't matter if it was making sense or not. Did they really thought we will feel bad for this character's death? Well, I didn't. Not really. You know, I have been rambling for too long, but this is what happens when I am not being even a little biased towards it. I will just end the video after this last point. It will end with the very first question I asked in the beginning, which seems like eternity away now, so I will repeat it. In this movie Janet freaks out when she realizes they are experimented with quantum realm but in previous movies she is literally helping hang with his experiments with quantum realm so is there a reason behind it or is it a continuity error i'm sure it's an error they probably forgot about the scene since it was an end credit scene and you cannot say that maybe at that time they didn't thought about having civilization in quantum realm and if you think that then you should see this deleted scene from the previous ant man and wasp movie it shows creatures in realm And Janet's using a translator, and in the end credit scene of that movie, she is warning Scott about staying away from certain things. Make sure you stay out of the tardigrade fields. They're cute, but they'll eat you. So clearly, they had some ideas about this movie already back then. So, why this error between this movie and that end credit scene occurred is beyond my thinking. But that's my own answer to this question. And this is all I have to say. I know I might be looking like the biggest MCU hater right now. but i genuinely want them to make a comeback and deliver great products like they used to
I was just frustrated with them delivering mediocre products so consistently. It's like they are comfortable in being mediocre. I hope that's not true and they will bounce back. I can't really be fully excited about their upcoming projects now. I want to be excited for Guardian of the Galaxy 3 but but I think it might be in my best course to tread lightly. That's all I have to say. <laughs> this might be the first time I have ranted like this for so long. If you agreed with any point that I made or want to share your own opinions about it, do comment. I would love to hear what you have to say. And if you have watched the movie, comment below your thoughts about it. And press the like button if you like the video. Subscribe to the channel and I will see you in the next video. Goodbye.